when you have something bottled up inside you, like I did, uh, a style of leadership, a philosophy, so to speak, and you don't feel like you have any uh, material out there to really hang on, you know, there's the traditional forms of management and leadership, um, you, you, you're starting to, you get a feeling of frustration. And when I came upon the People First program, I read the book and I came upon the program, uh, I realized that the, the People First process and the People First program really gave us uh, a new language to speak around my tech, uh, specifically uh, the pyramid of people power, where you talk about the five most important words in the English language are, uh, I am proud of you. And it goes on from there. I believe in you. I need you. Thank you. And yes, you expect success. So, so we speak that language uh, around MyTech. We call our employees purpose partners. And uh, we all have uh, a common purpose. We're partners in that. And that's a, a vision that we, um, we created as a result of our People First certification process. And I thought of probably a hundred visions that um, may or may not have been good for MyTech. What was great about the vision that we ultimately landed on is that our purpose partners were the ones that developed it, and, uh, and it's the one that we carry forward today. You know, the People First training uh, really gave everybody uh, a little insight into the, what I believe uh, is the right leadership style for all of the leaders at MyTech, starting with me. Uh, and it was uh, almost a platform, if you will, uh, to make that announcement and bring them along with me uh, for 14 weeks to become a certified company. I had, uh, in my mind, my heart, a way uh, to lead that was uh, different from traditional uh, leadership uh, principles. And um, I, I, was, I was having difficulty landing on, uh, on a structure, so you know, an infrastructure to hang this philosophy on. And then uh, uh, Jack Lanham gave me the book People First. I read it and uh, it just, you know, it grew from there because it was there. We've always had a, a very good culture at MyTech, a great culture, in fact, uh, one that was focused on our customers, uh, uh, customer service, satisfying them, uh, sustained profitability, all the things that you'd like to see in a company. Uh, I just felt that um, with more emphasis and really caring about people um, that it would be a much more pleasant place to work. And it's the way I always wanted to be led and I just assumed, and rightfully so because I've had lots and lots of feedback, that uh, it's the way most folks want to be led. In fact, Jack often says that um, uh, survey after survey tells us that the workforce feels that they're overmanaged and underled. And I wanted to change that in a way, especially with maybe uh, you know, the younger generation, so to speak, uh, in the workforce, uh, putting a culture in place that would do that. You know, leaders that embark on things like this um, uh, are always looking for the ROI, you know, the return on investment. And uh, I can't think of anything more important to invest in than our people. Um, uh, a, a colleague in town uh, and I were talking one day and uh, I was uh, sharing with him that nothing frustrates me more than a leader who says our people are our greatest asset and then they don't walk the talk. They don't demonstrate that. Um, so number one, um, it's, it, it just makes people feel better about themselves and I just firmly believe that uh, they go home feeling better about themselves at night they feel better about themselves when they walk in the door in the morning. And uh, you know, people that have less stress and uh, more joy in their lives uh, typically are more productive. There are study after study about that. Uh, how, do you, how do you quantify that? Not easy to do, quite frankly. Uh, and if you go into a program like this uh, or a culture shift like this and you're doing it for the purpose of getting more out of your people, um, your people will find you out. That it's, it's, it's people, you can't fake sincerity. People will figure that out. They do not want to be manipulated. Actually, people don't even want to be motivated. They want to be inspired. And that's what makes them get up in the morning and say, I get to go to my tech today instead of, oh, I got to go to my tech today. 
So that's what we're striving for, and we, we just believe it's better. Uh, it's better for them. And uh, it does translate into some uh, tangible things, uh, 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 lower turnover of people. We know how costly it is to uh, recruit, hire, and retain. Uh, it's easier to just retain and have people staying here because they opt in, not because they feel like they're trapped. You know, it's easy for me to talk about this because uh, it's so deeply embedded in, in, uh, in my core that um, uh, learning about people first, reading the book, getting to know Jack, getting to know Dan, uh, having them literally become part of our company uh, has been nothing short of incredible. And uh, I uh, took the senior executive team, we call our set senior executive team, uh, off to a retreat uh, and asked Jack and one of his other associates, P.J. Bouchard, to help facilitate some uh, sessions. But most of it uh, was team building. Uh, we went off to a ranch, we rode horses together, we did some ropes course stuff, we did a lot of that sort of thing. And the way I explain it, and I've said to uh, several people, is I watched our senior team transformed right before my eyes. I watched them from a collection of very successful senior executives become a true executive leadership team. Um, they have no uh, qualms about uh, effectively confronting each other. Um, they'll tell you that they love each other. Uh, it's a very unique situation and all of this really started with uh, uh, the People First program. You know, everything really revolves around trust. Jack talks about it extensively. He has what he calls the seven attributes of trust. And, um, and we actually have a, a wagon wheel sitting outside my office with the word trust right on the hub and the seven attributes all around as, as spokes on, on the wagon wheel. And it's commonly uh, accepted that uh, without trust, any leadership team is going to be compromised. Uh, it takes trust to really be transparent, which you need to be, uh, to not uh, be politically motivated, as many uh, leadership teams are in an organization, and to really, really generate results, because those results come when you lock arms. Our number three uh, core value is teamwork, and we uh, walk the talk. One of the things that uh, Jack and I started talking about, and, and Jack layers things, so you know you can't get the whole thing day one. Uh, so the first thing was really uh, embedding people first as a, as a culture, and a lot of companies call it different things. Uh, focus on people, people-centric, there's a lot of different things. The brand, uh, the trademark for Jack is people first. And once we got through that, uh, Jack started um, sort of peeling the onion back a little bit more and started talking to me about key business imperatives, KBIs. And, you know, you might just say goals, um, but we call them KBIs, and I developed uh, five. And I don't think that you really can focus on very many more than three to five, and we have, uh, as an enterprise, five. So my five KBIs became the KBIs of the enterprise. And everything else as a result of that, um, of identifying it and communicating it, has spun off and everybody else's KBIs now align in one way or another with the five KBIs that I established for myself in the uh, enterprise. You know, I would absolutely recommend people first to anybody, and I have, in fact. Uh, every opportunity I get, uh, I talk about Jack Lanham and uh, the relationship that uh, I was able to develop with Jack. But more than that, his team. Uh, Jack doesn't do any of the People First training for our company. Uh, his master trainer, Dan Phillips, uh, started with, the, with us in January of 2012. And to this day, Dan is still the trainer uh, for all the People First classes that we hold. And we hold uh, seven or eight of those uh, on average a year all over the country. And uh, we've, we now have developed, we've co-developed with Jack and his team, uh, Dan being an integral part of that, uh, a two-day class. So it doesn't have to take 14 weeks to get through the entire leadership program. And uh, in fact, we, uh, we always say Dan is the brand. 
um, because he's the one that actually comes and does the training. Everybody who's been people first trained at MyTech has been trained by Dan, one of Jack's guys. So, uh, you know, Jack is the face of uh, the organization. There's no question about that. Uh, all the content comes out of Jack, but he's got a great team. So I recommend um, the people first, uh, philosophy first, uh, the program, and staying with it uh, as a culture uh, to everybody uh, that I have an opportunity to do that with.